your name and work setting? Um, well, my name is Nick, um, and I currently am employed as an academic at, in Newcastle. Um, and home for me is in North Yorkshire. The reasons initially were to learn a little bit more about spirituality in leadership, contemplative leadership, and to learn a bit more about those different ways of leading. Um, I think it would be fair to say the course covers those fantastically. However, uh, that isn't really where the real value from the course comes from. Um, and I'd obviously like to talk a bit more about that. Well, I think this is really where the value of the course um, is. It's the difference it makes to you as a person and to your functioning as part of a group or a team in the work context. For me though, uh, at a sort of very personal level, the difference it's made, um, it's enabled me to, I think ultimately become a more caring, kind um, and compassionate person and as a result to value those characteristics in others. Yeah, the course is, the course has some magical mystery I think because it encourages and promotes a team dynamic which is unlike any other um, course which I have been on. As an academic I teach on leadership courses myself, I've attended leadership courses and this particular course is particularly special in the way in which it enables the group to be um, open with each other, uh, to share with each other, uh, to learn from each other, um, to share hopes with each other. And your question is really about, well, how does the course precisely do that? And I think that's, that's very hard to pin down. Um, and I think really the only way to, to do that is to be on the course yourself and experience it. Um, I don't think any words from me um, are going to be able to articulate precisely how it does that. Um, but anybody viewing this, you'd have to trust me that it does, um, and it's unlike anything else. I mean, I work in the university sector, and I just wish we could bottle and capture what goes on here and apply that to university courses, because it would make such a big difference. Mm. But unfortunately, you can't capture it and bottle it in that way. You have to experience it. Yeah, a few things spring to mind. Uh, the first would be the, um, the type of people and persons the course recruits, um, so that, um, that that helps encourage and foster this dynamic and this openness. Um, so it's cohort that it, the cohorts that it has on the programme um, a very uh, that's really thought through in terms of how the course is going to operate. The way the course is led and facilitated, I use the word led, that implies that somehow there are people in charge of the course. That's really not the case. The learning is very person-centred and the focus is on the participants and not the leaders. So, the f so f facilitation might be a better word, but again, that doesn't adequately capture the way in which those that lead the course are almost part of the course with you. And I think that's really, uh, really important. Um, and then I think the mix of, the mix between learning from theory, learning from each other, learning by sharing. There are so many different ways in which learning happens. And it's probably the balance between those different things which is important. So if you're expecting a teacher-led, teacher-talk program, this isn't the one for you. Whereas if you're expecting to learn from the cohort, learn from experience, learn from each other, then this is the one for you. Well, it's important from the world. I, I, I said I was an academic and I teach um, corporate responsibility and ethics. And corporate responsibility um, probably should be called corporate irresponsibility. Insofar as the world right now 
needs more leaders who are more caring, kind, compassionate, open. And unfortunately, um, this isn't what's normally taught on leadership courses. Leadership is often associated with you know, the vision of the heroic leader, someone who is decisive and makes decisions and takes command and control. Um, and in fact, that's not what the world needs right now. What the world needs is leaders who listen, who are open, who are vulnerable, who make decisions with others. Um, and it's those types of skills based in your soul and your heart, um, which is what this course offers. And really out there, that's what the world needs right now. Who would benefit? Well, of course, if you have a program entitled Soul of Leadership, the first instinct is that uh, you need to be a leader to attend the course, a leader in a professional capacity. That's definitely not the case. Um, I would say in terms of leading, think of leading in terms of leading yourself, um, as well as uh, leading in conjunction with others. And others could be, it could be leading with others in relation to your family, your children. It doesn't have to be in a professional work context. So I think anybody that has relationships with others, and that's very broad, anybody who wishes to transform themselves and by doing so transform others, um, this is who this would see this programme. As leadership courses go, the, the programme isn't particularly expensive. However, um, if you are funding yourself and not getting sponsorship, if you are funding yourself, then of course the, the programme has a cost um, which would uh, limit its availability to a, you know, a wide section of the population. Mm -hmm. So having sources of funding, be them from your employer or third parties, um, is absolutely crucial. Um, so for me personally, I was lucky to um, have some external funding to enable me to attend the course and quite frankly without it I would have been unable to attend. Um, so um, Woodbrook has done a great job in terms of keeping the costs as reasonable as possible um, but um, external funding is crucial to achieve the aims that I talked about in terms of um, pr producing better leaders and managers. Yeah, I think the last thing I would say is that the programme is held at uh, Woodbrook, uh, which is near the centre of Birmingham, which of course for many people in the UK um, in particular is a perfect location for it to be held, right in the centre uh, in, in the centre of the map, so whether you're based in Edinburgh, Manchester, London, um, Bristol, um, you know, it's easily accessible to be here. Uh, and Woodbrook also is a retreat in so far as it is in a lovely quiet location in about 10 acres of gardens and grounds and provides the perfect um, quiet backdrop um, to what goes on here on this course. Thank you.